Good afternoon, everyone. It means a great deal to me to see so many of you took the time to be here today. My name is Ocean Andrew from House District 46, and I want to thank Congressman Gates for coming up from the great state of Florida. My name is Ocean Andrew, from House District 46, and I want to thank Congressman Gates for coming up from the great state of Florida to be here in the great state of Wyoming today. Not everyone in Washington represents their state as well as Matt Gates does. Unfortunately, our own representative would rather send our taxpayer money to the Middle East instead of giving, keeping it here at home. Wyoming believes in America first, in ending foreign wars in keeping the government out of our lives. Yeah! Simply put, come next election, Wyoming deserves better. Yeah! It is my pleasure to introduce to you Congressman Gates. Liz Cheney had a rally with all of her supporters, they could likely meet inside one of the elevators in the Capitol yeah! and still have plenty of room for social distancing. Yeah! I want to thank Representative Ocean Andrew. His first day as a state representative was yesterday, and he invited me to be here with all of you today. I'd say that's a pretty good start for the young man. confess to you, this is my first time in Wyoming. I've been here for about an hour, and I feel like I already know the place a lot better than your misguided representative, Liz Cheney. My grandfather was a small town mayor in not too distant North Dakota. He passed before his time, but not before passing into legend. And he passed along a little wisdom to my dad. My old man calls it prairie populism. Do right by your people. Yeah. Never sell out. Yeah. Fight their dislikes. And never, never let the powerful run over the weak. Inspire people through courage and tell the truth. Yeah. The truth is that the establishment in both political parties have teamed up to screw our fellow Americans for generations. Now in Washington, D.C., the private insider club of Joe Biden, Mitch McConnell, Mitt Romney, Nancy Pelosi, and Liz Cheney, they want to return our government to its default setting, enriching them making them more powerful at our expense. But we can stop them, and it starts right here in Wyoming. After all, prairie populism is a lot more effective when we join together across party lines, getting rid of those old dogmas. Our battle is no longer just Republican versus Democrat. It's not just red team versus blue team. Absolutely not. We got to put America first. Those are the battles. Those are the old battles of yesteryear. But people have always come to the great frontiers of Wyoming to win the future. That's why I'm here. We're going to see a better future for our people. We're going to draw it closer to us. And we are going to ensure that we get better representation all over this great country to fight for the men and women who have made America great. We deserve American greatness, not managed decline. And in that battle, it's the establishment against the rest of us. And sure, they control big media, big corporations, big tech, big defense contractors, and they walk around Washington, D.C. with big checkbooks and even bigger egos. But we have something that is far more precious and far more powerful. 
we control the true spirit and identity of America. upcoming election and Wyoming will bring Washington to its knees. You see, Washington, D.C. mythologizes the establishment power brokers like Liz Cheney for climbing in a deeply corrupt game. But there are more of us than there are of them, and we see the fakes and the phonies more clearly than ever before. They've suppressed American wages by allowing unchecked illegal immigration. They've hollowed out the towns and villages in our country with trade deals that enrich China at the expense of our people. We were told by Liz Cheney and all of the globalists that if we accepted globalism, we would export America's best crops, best products, best services. But instead, all too often, we are exporting America's bravest patriots to die in foreign distant lands. A nation that sends its best to go fight in the worst places in the world should not send its worst to be representatives in the United States Congress. But we are here in happy spirit, in joy, because we do not have to accept failure or losing. We do not have to be condemned to some grim fate. We're Americans. And if there's a fight for the soul of this country, we intend to win it. Our fellow Americans aren't going to be living like the folks in the Portland, Oregon Autonomous Zone or the Chaz. Our fellow Americans aren't going to accept New York's silly lockdowns that constrain freedom. Our fellow Americans aren't going to live on the feces-stained sidewalks of San Francisco. No, President Donald J. Trump showed us that with strong borders, with a focused foreign policy, with less regulation, with less involvement from Washington and with lower taxes, America's best days are still yet to come. Don't you ever let some spoiled celebrity or athlete or socialist politician ever tell you otherwise. America, America is not just an idea. It's not just a constitution. America is our home and we must protect our home. One thing America is not, America is not some vaccine to global tyranny that we have to administer through decades of military occupations in foreign lands. No success means we honor how special America is. And it also means that we have to see our leaders for who they truly are. Now, Liz Cheney taunts me for wearing makeup in my television appearances. Now, makeup only hides the slightest imperfections of the skin. It does very little to conceal the soulless corruption of Washington, D.C. You know, it's, it's pretty easy for me to get a little makeup off my shirt. Far more difficult for Liz Cheney to get the blood off her hands after sending America's best to foreign lands to die for a knowable gain and personal profit. 80% of Taliban fighters have never been more than 20 miles for their own home. And so it's a little confusing to me why Liz Cheney's always fighting in Congress to spend more money in Kandahar and in Arabia than in the great state of Wyoming. But maybe it shouldn't surprise us all that much. In 2016, in that election cycle, Liz Cheney announced her candidacy for Congress from Wyoming, from Virginia. Yeah. How out of touch! How un-
untouchable she must think she is. Now the neocons say, we got to fight them abroad so we don't have to fight them at home. Well, maybe we have to fight them abroad because we are abroad so much. You know, I was going to say, maybe we ought to fight the neocons at home so we don't have to fight them in Washington, D.C. But that's the problem, isn't it? Because the neocons are at home in Washington, D.C. Liz Cheney and I came to Congress in the same class, but she was already a master of the ways of the Beltway in ways I will never be. Because she's lived there for all but about two years of her life. That was a little bit of a problem when she wanted to run for the United States Senate here in Wyoming. She claimed to be a resident of the state for 10 years based on a fishing license. Of course, she wasn't, and she quickly withdrew. By my count, that's the last time a Cheney had a viable exit strategy. I think your, uh, your U.S. Senator, your U.S. Senator Loomis, said it best. It's a unique strategy to live your entire life elsewhere and then come to a state a year before you're going to announce that you're going to run for that state's highest office. I think Senator Loomis is right. Liz Cheney is not Wyoming. But Cheney came back. The neocons are nothing if not persistent. Now in 2016, I announced my campaign for Congress in Florida's first congressional district. I represent the district that has the highest concentration of active duty military and veterans in America. And we love our military and veterans. You see, you see where I come from, military families, they aren't just a great feature of our community. They are the essential ingredient of our community. And I see every day the cost of the wars that Liz Cheney has advocated for. I see it in the tearful goodbyes in airports, the marriages that are destroyed, the parenting that's interrupted, the drug abuse, the veteran suicide, lost limbs, lost minds, lost lives, lost hope. Amen. We are here in the cowboy state. Yeah. Now, Carter River! Now, I, I understand that, you know, the media, they used to call Bush Cheney cowboys abroad, but I think that's a slur because the cowboys I know, sure, they're tough and they're brave, but they're also judicious and smart and thoughtful and tender and gentle when the cause comes. Not exactly what you think about when you think of disloyal Liz Cheney. Now, the, the real cowboys, I guess they fought Indians so that they could use the land. But what are America's soldiers even fighting for that Liz Cheney sends all around the world? What are the great benefits that we all get from our misadventures in Syria and Afghanistan and Somalia? Places that a lot of Americans couldn't even point to on a map. You see, real cowboys... They would have found greener pastures than Afghanistan, and it wouldn't have taken them 20 years to do it. We are here in Wyoming, and in a lot of ways, this feels like the most American of states. Self-reliant, on the frontier, maybe a little hard to get to. And so how is it then? that Wyoming has such a disappointing congresswoman. I guess you have to ask yourself the question, why is it that America has such a disappointing Congress? Because in a lot of ways, Liz Cheney is exactly like Congress, deeply unpopular and owned by special interests. Matter of fact, last year, in the year 2020, Liz Cheney raised more money from political action committees than she raised from actual human beings. Think about that. More money from PACs than from people. She works for them, not you. She does their bidding, not yours. I stand before you, the only Republican in Congress who refuses all donations from political action committees. Their money is no good with me. 
American people should be our one and only special interest. You know, Liz Cheney calls herself a leader in Washington, but to me, being a leader does not mean winning an election a bunch, uh, amongst a bunch of politicians. Being a leader doesn't even mean that you've lived a flawless personal life. I can tell you, I sure haven't. I don't even, I, I'd probably say not even former President Trump has. Okay. Leadership doesn't mean backing a Nancy Pelosi uh, fueled impeachment by reflex. You know, there's basically two things that Liz Cheney has done in the United States Congress. Frustrate the agenda of President Trump and sell out to the forever war machine that blows stuff up that nobody cares about, that rebuilds stuff nobody wants, and that borrows money from China to do it. All the while, defense contractors get rich, lobbyists get powerful, Congress members get reelected, and our bravest patriots, the best among us, die and are maimed on the battlefield. Our position is consistent. Liz Cheney's is not. And how can you even call yourself a representative when you don't represent the will of the people? I mean, that's what all the neocons ask about the Arab dictators. I figure maybe we ought to ask the same question of a Beltway bureaucrat turned fake cowgirl who supported an impeachment that is deeply unpopular in the state of Wyoming. Our position is remarkably consistent. And yeah, Liz Cheney's kind of a hypocrite on the issue of regime change, I would say. Like she supports regime change in the Middle East. She supported Nancy Pelosi's regime change impeachment of Donald Trump. But when a majority of the Republicans in Congress say this person no longer speaks for us, all of a sudden Liz Cheney's against regime change. You know, I think our position is the right one. Remove troops from Germany and Korea when they have served their purpose. Remove troops from Afghanistan where there is no purpose. Remove troops from Syria where there wasn't even a purpose in the first place and remove Liz Cheney as the leader of the Republican Conference. Because, because based on the numbers I've seen, Liz Cheney is less popular among Republicans in her own state than Muammar Gaddafi was among the Libyans. I mean, I, hold on, I gotta get the, so I, I had a chance to communicate with President Trump yesterday. He sends his love, he loves you all so much, and President Trump is going to keep fighting for this country with every breath that he has. But he wanted me to share with you the results from a poll that was just released yesterday. 70% of all Wyoming voters believe that the impeachment trial is unconstitutional. Two thirds of all voters in Wyoming disapprove of Liz Cheney's vote to impeach President Trump. Almost 60% approve of the Republicans removing Liz Cheney from Republican leadership. Oh, hold on, hold on. We, uh, a man who loves Wyoming, who loves the hunt and fish. How about a word for Donald Trump Jr.? Don, what do you have to share with the people of Wyoming? What's going on, guys? I told you it's been so bad. You know, Wyoming, it seems like based on the numbers that Matt just talked about, it seems like Liz Cheney's favorables there are only slightly worse than her father's shooting skills. <laughs> They're supposed to raise money to help the party. They're supposed to recruit new members. They're supposed to lead. And I've been pretty involved for the last few years, and I haven't seen Liz Cheney do any of those things. So, so 
it's time to have a change at the top. It's time to have people that are going to start representing the people, not their own agendas, not their own nonsense, but their constituency. And since the people of Wyoming are clearly not thrilled with Miss Cheney, let's find someone who can replace her and actually do that job well. The only way that never-ending war Liz Cheney stays in there is if 20 people run, 20 people split up the vote, and she gets a couple of the rhino losers together to actually take the biggest number. So let's be careful about who it is. Don't just back the first person that comes along. Let's vet these guys and find the antithesis of Liz Cheney. Let's find someone who's for America and against wars. It's for yeah. the working man and against the special interests. Let's find exactly the opposite of her and let's back that person fully. But let's not make that decision today. We have some time. Let's find the right one. Let's not split this vote up and blow our opportunity to get rid of a rhino. Yeah. All right, thank you, Don. Now, there are some who've only sought the removal of Liz Cheney following impeachment. But I'll share with you, I'm OG on the Team Cheney removal movement. I called for her ouster when she went after one of America's best congressmen, Thomas Massey. Now, Thomas might not be as well known as I am, but he's far smarter. A Kentucky genius went to MIT, helped develop and advance virtual reality of all things. I think Congress is probably the worst of virtual reality. <laughs> But, but, you know, with, with Thomas, he does stuff that in Washington seems very weird, very strange, very peculiar. You see, when the leadership in both parties team up for trillions of dollars in spending without so much as a recorded vote, Thomas objects to make Congress actually show up and vote before they can sell out the American people. When presidents of both parties have tried to do an end run around Congress to suck our nation into new endless wars, Thomas Massey votes with the Constitution, yeah. not with party leadership. Yeah. And when senior government officials in our intelligence community spy on Americans, break the law, and lie to Congress about it, Thomas Massey exposes them to protect the rest of us. Now, Thomas may be eccentric and different, but I think we need more brilliant people in Congress, not less. Yeah. But see, there is, there is no room for the liberty-loving contingent of our movement in Liz Cheney's Republican Party. No. When Massey got crossways with Trump, Liz backed a primary challenger, and Thomas won with over 80% of the vote. Yeah. I welcome the libertarians, the prairie populists, the America first crowd. And I think we'll have to probably forgive each other of our preferences and our foils and follies, our peculiarities and our peccadilloes, because it is going to take every one of us working together, driving our agenda and saving this great country, the greatest country that has ever existed in all of human history. I think we're better than the mean girls style of politics of Liz Cheney yeah. that would stuff the nerds into lockers and question the masculinity of her critics. Yeah. In 1988, when George H.W. Bush was accepting the Republican nomination for president, he said, I am a quiet man and I hear the quiet people of this country. Well, America first, we are not a quiet movement and I am not a quiet man. I may be a canceled man in some corners, but I hear the forgotten, the canceled, the downtrodden, and those who believe that they need a voice in our government that actually speaks for them. And what I hear is that the silent majority is getting louder every day. Now Liz Cheney denounces me for being on television. 
She who was once a paid television contributor. You know, hey, at least they don't have to pay me. I'll go anywhere. I'll be on any network. I'll take on any host to defend America and her people. That is what our movement requires. <laughs> Wyoming is a great state. You are great people. You are real America. We are in a battle for the soul of the Republican Party, and I intend to win it. You can help me. You can help me break a corrupt system. You can send a representative who actually represents you, and you can send Liz Cheney home, back home to Washington, D.C. Thank you all so much. God bless you. God bless our great country. It's going to be a long two years, but let's go get them.